my friends. Welcome to the metal shop. Today we are installing the oil cooler. If you look here, you're gonna see, wait a minute, those are two oil coolers. And I will tell you why. Originally, <clears throat> in a, some a giant parts hoard order from Finish Line, I purchased this oil cooler. And he states that this is the proper MoCal style cooler used on the Cobras. And you'll see its dimensions are roughly, the cooling area is roughly 13 inches by four inches here. And then I bought this from Acton Cobra, and it's just a nice sheet metal shroud, but it's designed exactly like the 427 SC cars. And it fits like this. It's pretty nice. He asked me what Cobra I had and so on. And anyway, this fits in there. I have to do some fab work and so on. But if you'll notice, the space here with this on an angle here. All right. So we crouch down here with the four inch oil cooler installed. Look at that gap. You see that? There's a huge gap roughly two inches or so between the bottom of the oil cooler and this little opening here in the car. Pause again. I spoke with Nick Acton, Acton Cobra, via email, and I'm like, what gives? So I like your shroud, the fan shroud here. It fits pretty nicely. And I'm gonna, certainly going to like the look. I don't like the real 427SC piece here, but oil cooler I bought from finish line just doesn't fit it's about two inches too short so he gives me the dimensions of the actual 427 SC Cobra oil cooler and it's 5.97 inches call it six inches in height is what it's supposed to be and it'll fit in there fit nicely with the shroud and the six inch cooler will take up the gap and I don't even want to tell you what I discovered here, but I, you know, I do want to tell you, I'm going to share it. That oil cooler from finish line was 135 bucks. Okay. Seems like a good deal, whatever. So I start searching. I'm like, well, I need to find the right one. And Nick gives me a couple of links and those, anything associated with Cobra, you are paying a premium for it. And it may or may not necessarily be worth it. I ended up, I searched summit and I found this cooler right here, okay, by Mishimoto. So it had an M painted on it and spray paint for 165 bucks. And I'm like, God, I don't wanna spend 165 bucks. I already spent 135, I don't know if I can return it. So I searched eBay, found one with the exact dimensions. And this was with shipping just under 50 bucks, 47.50. And I, trust me, I'm here with my hands on them. This is every bit as nice as this. Actually a little nicer. That one is bare, or it might be painted. This one's powder coated, silver. Super nice, the right diameter, or the right dimensions. Fits this exactly, and it will fit in my opening. So, like I said, I have to do a little bit of fab work. I'm gonna have to drill there in the bottom. Got my hose over here ready to be cut to length, so I'm all set, but $47.50. So do your due diligence, folks, and don't always buy the part that's, you know, that's made for made for Cobras, whatever. I love Finish Line. I spent over $2,000 buying parts from them, but this is ridiculous, you know? $100 more for that than for the correct part that fits. Now you can use this, it's fine. You know, if you're not gonna use this shroud, this is actually, you know, this will fit in here nicely. And you could fab something up for it. You could bolt it right to the bottom there like that and whatever, however you want it. And it will fit fits the opening very quite nicely. But like anything, if you want to use original parts, make yours like an SC was, this is the stuff you're going to run into. So we're going to install that one. Cool. All right. Well, we're mocked up. Just a little fiddly, you know, kind of getting the angles right. Hard to see, but drilled a couple of holes there in the bottom. I think 
I'm going to use this piece of steel and I'll cut it to shape and use it as reinforcement. It has a nice little skid plate there. The bolts will go through that. Really unnecessary to hold the oil cooler in place, but it will hold that nice chunk of steel that I can paint and so on. Excuse me, you'll never see it, but that's pretty low. You're going to hit speed bumps and you're going to hit stuff going off driveways and why not protect your finish? So I'll get on that tomorrow. And I'm still gonna fabricate a piece, a piece of aluminum here that goes from the oil cooler shroud to the radiator. And it will actually be reinforcing and hold that top of that in place and also cut off airflow from going by the radiator like that. And I'm going to use an old road sign that I have here and just because I want to. I mean, I could buy aluminum. These road signs are made out of nice aluminum and I just think it's kind of cool. You might think it's a little janky, a little whatever. When this car, of course I'm gonna have the aluminum side facing up. This car goes up on a lift someday. They're gonna look and be like, oh, I used a road sign, but I think it's kind of cool. Back in the old days when guys used road stop signs, you know, road signs and license plates or whatever to fix rot holes in their car, kind of cool. So. Anyway, it's late. We'll get that going tomorrow. Get the aluminum bent up, probably the skid plate, and the hoses. Awesome. All right, so I'm working on my roadside-based support plate and whatever you want to call it, shroud, to kind of funnel more air into the radiator, which is going to be above it. This is upside down right now. I just wanted to show you. I mean, I'm totally a hack here. I'm not <laughs> a metal worker at all. I cut these with my body saw here the grinder, you know, whatever. And I still have some cuts to go here, but I was kind of proud of the bend here where I wedged a piece of steel here in my vise and used these C-clamps and bent it with sheer caveman strength and my little, you know, five pound sledge here to get the desired effect that I wanted. And you can do stuff like this. I'm gonna um, file down all these edges and, and make this at least look somewhat nice but uh yeah i am proud of that so hang on one second and let's pull this thing out of the vice. Right, so here it is so i still have to cut the holes and i'm gonna have to re-engineer the angle here um so that it looks right but i elected to go full width of the radiator and i'm gonna angle it down to the full width of the uh shroud for the oil cooler and I'm going to mount this to the underside of the radiator where it has, you know, kind of a flange there. So this will actually add strength as well. And you can see the marks here from all my failed attempts, whatever. Worst comes to worst, this thing doesn't work at all. And I can use it as a template and bring it to, I have a friend who's a very skilled metal fabricator who could, I bet he could bang this out for me in like five minutes and it'll be perfect. So hang on, we'll see. So, I'm done with this portion of it. You can see the piece I fabricated here from the road sign. Came out very good, like I wanted it to. Have this thing all bolted in place. Get some rubber spacers down here. i make up the difference. So it's a six inch um, oil cooler, but it's mounted on the bias on an angle, increase your surface area, same as the radiator. It makes perfect sense. And you see here on the bottom, Got those bolts sticking through and we're ready for the skid plate. And I have the skid plate made and I painted it and I just got cute and I have some Hertz gold spray paint. Um, so I just hit it. It didn't come out that great because um, it was trying to cover black. Maybe I'll try and put one more coat on. You're never going to see it anyway. Like I said, it's just, just a little skid plate protector there you know, protect the nose of the car. So tomorrow, I'm gonna work on getting the hoses installed. And that's really my only project that I'm gonna try and get done tomorrow. Hopefully, fingers crossed, shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't take that long. And it should be, 
And I'm not gonna jinx myself. Should be relatively, relatively straightforward and easy. Let's hope. All right, so it's the next day. Just getting these hoses done. Thankfully, I was thought ahead and put some fittings on previously when I made the, the shorter lines. I'll talk about that uh, when I get these on the car. I think I've gone over this before, but I'm just gonna give a real quick primer on how to use this push lock hose, how to make your own fittings. And this is by Fragola. Beautiful stuff. It's so nice and lightweight. Has this cloth covering. Looks, you know, vintage like it's from the 60s. The fittings are super nice. Um, the only drawback <laughs> is really hard to work with when you're going to do the push lock. So what I like to do is I get everything ready here. You need a good set of cutters to cut your hose. Um, you want to get a nice square cut. You know, a razor blade is just not going to do that. So you want to have a good set of cutters here. Stand All up. right, so we have it cut. I like to keep a lighter in case we got frayed ends. You kind of just give them a little, give them a little once over there, the lighter, if you got any frayed ends there. Have the fitting in the vise. Now, the straight fittings are obviously much easier to install because you're pushing the straight fitting straight into the hose. The 45, much more difficult because of the angle and where you can grip it. Um, I like to coat the fitting in 3-in-1 oil, WD-40, whatever works. And then we use a heat gun to heat up the end quite a bit and to force the hose on. And lest we forget, just like when you're making brake line fittings, if you're using, I use these, I love these Gates heat shrink, what are these called? Power grip, the Gates power grip clamps. Don't forget to slip this on and slip this thing well past where you're working because this area is going to heat up. This thing is very sensitive to heat. Sometimes just sitting in a drawer if it's too hot, these things will start to crush this cardboard. So slip that on first, heat it up, oil up your fitting, and then caveman strength to put that on. I'm not going to film it because it's going to it's gonna be a fight. So rejoin me in a minute when we're done. Do this on the bench. Get your lengths measured three, four times, not measure twice, cut once, measure 10 times, cut once. Get your hose the way you want it. Also remember, get your ends oriented the way you want them. These I needed opposite. Uh, if you don't like where it says Gates heat shrink here, you want a clean look, a little bit of brake clean or carb cleaner or whatever solvent will take that right off. Cause I like a nice clean look these things are amazing, but they are one-time use. I'm making these hoses. They're expensive. I really like the way they look. Um, again, I'm only making one car. It's going to be nice. I taped this up in the jaws of the vise to um, keep it from getting all galled up. Hopefully, we did that. Ooh, still quite a bit of heat built up in there. That's the other thing. When you're heating the end of this, it, it's not a 30-second thing. It's a couple of minutes, minute and a half, two minutes. You'll feel it. When it's hot, so hot you can't touch it, then it's hot enough <laughs> for you to shove the hose over the fitting. Build up a good amount of heat in there. All right, let's get this uh, installed on the car. I do have a little bit of anti-seize on that. These are both aluminum, but I didn't. the threads on this just didn't make me warm and fuzzy. I put a little bit of anti-seize on there. So let's get this hose mounted up and run and enjoy the finished product. Hang on. All right, my friends, there it is. There's the money shot. And there's nothing that looks better than an original Cobra with an oil cooler, oil cooler lines, those vintage fans. I mean, that is truly the money shot. And I like these fittings quite a bit. I like the hose, the Fragola products. Now it was expensive um, but in the oil cooler, the shroud, the lines, everything. I mean, I probably have, I don't know, close to 500 bucks, I'm guessing, maybe 400, right in there. So when people are selling you these kits, I know Acton Cobra sells a kit and it's like 500 bucks. Um, you may wanna, you think, oh boy, that's a lot of money. That's not a good deal. It may be a good deal. Now, of course you can do this cheaper. Talk to you about the oil cooler, where to get those um, and the lines. Now, if you wanted to do, you know, the, uh, what am I trying to say here? Those awful, you know, braided stainless steel lines with the, the red and the blue fittings, <laughs> no offense, I can't stand those. Um, you know, 
you can certainly do that. Now, I know before you guys kill me in the comments, I know the original Cobras came with blue 45 degree, or sorry, 90 degree fittings there in the old cooler. But do you know why that was? Because that's all they could get. Everything else, all the rest of the fittings were stainless or natural. So for whatever reason, when they were building the SC cars, they could only get that blue anodized fitting. So they went with that. Okay, I'm gonna lay this on you. So you wanna know my dirty little secret right now? I'm not even gonna be running this oil cooler. I mean, it's gonna be on the car, it's gonna look like this, but it's not gonna have oil in it. And I'll tell you why. Because these cars, unless you're actually racing, you don't really need, sorry, it's so washed out. I try to get a little bit of light in there. You don't need an oil cooler. It actually hurts your engine to have the oil temperatures too low. So unless you're running a thermostat, which tells when the oil's hot enough, it opens the thermostat, sends it to the oil cooler. Unless you're gonna run a thermostat, it's really not necessary. You'll see here, I have the external oil cooler. This is a from finish line. And these hoses just go straight down. It's hard to see. They go straight down to the oil filter itself. And I just have those two short lines. Now, the oil cooler will be, could be fully functional easily. I, those lines are real. I made those lines. I could just take out one of these short lines. The long line goes to here. The shorter 40 inch line goes to the oil, the plate on the oil filter assembly. And we are off to the races. But I'm not gonna be running it for now. It's just there for looks. But like I said, I don't do anything just purely for show. It will function if we need it to. All right, so that will do it for this weekend's project. It's like 90 something degrees here today in the metal shop and I'm dying here. Even in the, even in the garage, <laughs> I am dying. So as all of my friends, thanks for watching. Truly, truly appreciate your support. Please give me a like. New to the channel, please hit subscribe. And friends, take care. Bye-bye.